Um, thank you, sir, for your uh, insightful and thought-provoking deliberation. Uh, it was an honor listening to you, and we look forward to more such interactions in the near future. Uh, we have with us uh, Mr. P.J. Borua, executive editor of one of the oldest dailies of Assam, the Assam Tribune. Mr. P.J. Borua is a senior journalist with over 30 years of working experience in Assam and the Northeast. He started his journalistic career with the English daily, The Sentinel, in Guwahati after completing his postgraduate studies in English from Dibrugo University in 1984. He joined as a principal correspondent of the SMS daily, Doinik Jonambhumi, at their Guwahati office in 1986. In 1987, he became the Northeast correspondent of the English daily news time of Hyderabad. He later worked for a year at the paper's Hyderabad office before returning to Guwahati in 1989 to join the Assam Tribune. Mr. P.J. Barua has been closely associated with journalism education in the region. He has been a guest lecturer of the journalism department of Guwahati University, Dibrugo University, Assam University, K.K. Hendrick State Open University, Cotton College, among others. Now I would like to request our chief guest for today's occasion, Mr. P.J. Barua, sir, to share his thoughts with us. Respected Vice Chancellor of Krishnakanda Handigo State Open University, Professor Arkidas, respected speaker, Mr. Professor Punarwala, Register of KK Hendrick University, Professor Rup Choudhury, Deputy Director Nilima. Sangeeta Kakuti, respected faculty and dear friends present here. It gives me great pleasure to be present here on this very auspicious and, and happy occasion to mark the 12th Foundation Day of the Community Radio Gyan Taranga of K.K. Hendrick Open University. This is a community radio which is the first in the northeastern region of our country and started in 2010. In the initial years, Dr. Onkuran Dutta, who played a very important role in setting up this community radio, uh, he had invited me several times to participate in some of the programs associated with the community radio. And over the years, the radio has gone from strength to strength. And today, as Dr. Kunarwala has said, it's very difficult and to sustain a community radio for such a long time and Gyan Taranga has done it and that is a big achievement and we wish that it, it will continue its success story in the coming years. And for this I would like to thank the KK Handic administration, the production team associated with this radio. And the other day, Dr. Rubdu Jyoti Choudhury had said that Srimadhi Sangeeta Kakoti, she had played a very important role in shifting the this station from the old campus to the new campus, because a lot of technicalities and other things go in, you know, for shifting this whole infrastructure from one place to another. So, but, and this was done in a very short time so that the programs could continue without interruption. Community radio, as we have seen that, we have about 300 plus community radios all over the country. And in Assam, presently, we have three community radios. Along with Gyan Taranga, we have 
Radio Luit in Guwahati University and Radio Brahmaputra in Dibugo University. So what we see is that most of these uh, community radios in Assam are associated with the universities. So it is sort of a part of their educational program and most of the universities today are doing distance education. We had IDLE in Guwahati University and Rubin University is also introducing its uh, distance education programs. So this community radio is serving a very big educational need to reach out to the students in the first place along with conveying, conveying important socio-economic messages to the uh, people, to the grass, at the grassroots level, whether it is about social awareness, about health conditions, about nutrition, about education, social superstitions, what about child issues, women issues, and so on. So this is becoming a very important medium for many people in the outlying villages who cannot, say, afford, I mean, expensive, say many people might not be having a television or they cannot uh, uh, go for, you know, other expensive uh, medium of, uh, you know, uh, like uh, to get news and other things. So for many people, a radio is still a valuable or important source of uh, uh, information and entertainment also. We still remember in our young days how radio played a very important role in our lives, how we used to listen to commentaries of cricket matches being played in England or among between India and England or about entertainment programs, whether it is Kitty Malika or Radio Shilon or you know, women listening to this you know, serials and other programs, drama programs in broadcast. So radio was a very part of our, strong part of our lives, or it was found in spite of, of uh, besides information, news and other things, it gave us entertainment and also educated us on various issues. So today, a community radio at this point of time, as, as Mr. Professor Punawala has already said, so there are a lot of uh, challenges it has to face. I mean, uh, we have so many competition and other mediums of you know, information, uh, entertainment all around us at the press of a battle starting from the smartphone. So today, smartphone is becoming a server so prevalent, whether it's in a village or among all sections of the society. So people might not buy any other things, but they'll buy a smartphone. So it has become something like that. So at the age of smartphones, so a community radio faces a big challenge. But what we would like to see today that community radio, I mean, should spread out. It should not be, I think, confined to only educational institutions and all that. Community radio has a big role to play, say, in a uh, region like northeastern region, which is uh, the connectivity is very bad, where we have a lot of natural, I mean, hazards whether it's flood, erosion, landslides, we have other storms and other problems. So these are areas where community radio can play a very important role in times of distress. Apart from that, say a small community consisting of say about 20, 25 villages can form a community radio and share information among themselves about their agriculture, about the say communications, about so many other issues prevailing there, about diseases breaking out, about any some problems in the educational institutions. So this can be you no, know, they can be people can share, communicate, they can suggest ways to find solutions and all that. 
So community community radio, I believe, should be used very extensively. No, and it should be controlled by the community. That it should be produced the programs and other things could be produced by the community so that they can share. And there are people, I think, who can you know, contribute financially for the upkeep of such uh, community radios. I think the whole paradigm should change for, with new ideas and new concepts. It should not, community radio, I believe, should not continue with the old concepts and old, no, um, old, I mean, what you call agendas or parameters. It should cross the boundary and go and be, go in, among the people. Of course, they have that objective, but I think it should it should be free from you know, the age-old I mean, parameters of or barriers of say finance, of uh, you no know, old concepts of being concentrated only in some limited areas and all that. So it should be uh, the concept should be. Uh, made more popular, the community radio equipments and other things should be, uh, the, the cost factors should be also made less expensive so that you know, people can easily uh, set up a community radio. And for a big country like India, so I think 300 community, 300 plus community radio is, uh, I think uh, that is something we, you know, it's very negligible for a country like India. So we want community radios coming up in a very big way, you know, contributing for the social economic development of the people. So it can be a catalyst of change. So at a time when say print media is on the decline, when you know, everything is becoming digitalized and all that. So community, community radio as a form of you know, uh, medium, technical medium, can play a very important role because when you are getting uh, in other medium something which is not from your area and all that, so something happening in say Bihar, Maharashtra or Delhi might not interest you. But when you hear something happening in your area discussing something about your problems, a farmer discussing his problems in the radio, what, what can you do? There's some, some pests are attacking our crops. What can we do? We are talking with this uh, officer that we are using this sort of insecticide. So this sort of interaction, no, something people can share their sorrows, their happiness, no, their expectations, what we can do. They can plan on the radio what could be the agenda for development. People suggesting things and all that. Phone-in can be arranged and all that. So I think the whole community radio concept is becoming today very, I mean, till now, it is very straight laced or very confined to very academic and, you know, in a very inward way, I think. So there is a lot of possibilities for community radio in India, in Southeast Asia, Africa, you know, or other Latin America and all that. So to come up in a big way, and I think India should show, show the way how things can, you know, like medium like community radio can be picked up, developed, and make a catalyst of change, making things happen among our people. And we have uh, today the government coming, adopting a lot of schemes and strategies depending on technology. So till the other day, we had schemes where people no, even the Prime Minister of India, like Rajiv Gandhi, had said that if I send one rupee for development uh, to the people, from one rupee only 15 paise reaches the the beneficiary. 75 paise or 85 paise is lost on the way someone morrows it. Like. So only 15 paise reaches the beneficiary. But today, the government has introduced all this that the beneficiary gets the amount, the money in his account. So at least the middlemen and other you know, corrupting influences are you know, are being kept on the sideline. So technology is here, here, being used here so that the, the monetary benefit to, which, is, which is being given to a beneficiary reaches that person on time, on, in his account or in his hands. Like. 
so that way technology has to be used today to in community radio also to bring in changes and use it as a catalyst of change uh, dr punawar narula has said about the how community radio has played a big role during the pandemic and it has shown how you know we can operate uh, how community radios importance during times of distress and all that so this is a glowing example how community radio can be utilized you know for development to combat uh, pandemics to combat our natural hazards so there are a lot of possibilities and i think this is one area we are not speaking much about and of course uh, there is a fear among say the political class the of fears that community radio might be used you know as a political tool to say you know as a compare to use uh, for political purposes so i think that can be taken care of so when there are some rules and regulations are set in so you can you know avoid the political uh, deliberations and other things can be taken but as a healthy democracy i think why should politics be kept apart we can discuss politics also if you can discuss politics in uh, in other mediums as a democratic nation why you keep it out from say the community radio but there might be some uh, rules and regulations so that politic community radio might should not be used should not be allowed to be used as a political tool by any particular party or like that so that should be a level playing ground for all political parties to interact and making people aware about the political challenges or political you know decisions they have can make as a democratic uh, citizen of a democratic country so similarly finances and other things can be taken care of once we have the will and the government has the political will to you know uh, to open up community radio as a medium of change and bringing you know revolutionary changes to introduce it in the grassroots level in a big way so in fact what i would like to see is say is that political will at the end of the day will be very important to make community radio a important tool of change so in the coming days if the government and the political class uh, you know believe that we can use it as a you know tool of uh, at least for development for and uh, they can have the confidence and the courage to implement because that is also very important because uh, when the many political parties are there they might uh, not like the idea but we have to convince them that this is for the greater good of the nation for the greater good of the people and once they are convinced and the political will is there uh, then we can implement such uh, revolutionary schemes which can be a you no know, source of big changes in our country uh, with the uh, uh, before i conclude uh, i thank organizers for inviting me to this uh, uh, august occasion i thank the uh, dr kanwala for coming here and giving and lighting us on this pandemic and other issues relating to community radio uh, thank you once again thank you so much Uh, thank you, sir, uh, for your valuable deliberation on the theme, and also for enlightening us on the varied aspects of community radio, including its importance to society. Uh, now, I'd like to request the Vice Chancellor Krishna Kanta Hendix, State of the University, Professor Rajendra Prasad Das, to deliver the presidential address. So. good afternoon everybody uh the chief guest of the occasion uh sri prasant uh, j barwa ji the keynote speaker sri professor vinod uh, pabarwal ji our registrar uh dr arup jyoti choudhary ji the center in charge Uh, Sangeeta ji 
all the faculty members, students and media persons. In fact, I was also wondering that what I should speak on this occasion. But after listening, Pabarwalji and uh, uh, Baruaji, I feel I should also speak something on this occasion. At the outset, I must congratulate uh, our the people of uh, the center for celebrating this 12th year of its existence of this uh, Gyanbani program of this, our university. Uh, in fact, Jan uh, Tarang, uh, Gyan Tarang is uh, uh, something very unique. Uh, we have completed 12 years of our existence very successfully, starting from inception to this date, many things have been done. I was just going through the report which was uh, provided to me. Uh, in fact, all of us, people of our generation was uh, born uh, in an age of radio. What uh, Prasanji correctly said, we were born in the age of radio. You are all, our children, you youngsters are born in the age of computer information technology revolution. So whenever we lis listen anything about radio, we feel thrilled. We have some emotional attachment with radio. And uh, I will add to what he said, that if somebody was uh, having radio in the house, it was a status symbol of, the, of that house during our time. But today, uh, that is considered one of the outdated piece of uh, thing at home. I had one on uh, Philips radio long back when I was a student, I had purchased it. So my children could not recognize what it is. They say why it is so long, big one is kept in the house. But I remember how informative it was as a medium of communication. The morning was started with the news and many informations which was otherwise difficult to get for a common man in the village. We talk about reaching the unreached. It was only possible, radio was the only mechanism, only media of information, mode of information for unreached people common people of the, of the, not only of Assam, of the entire country. When I openly accept that it was difficult for us in the village to read newspaper, even newspaper was also not everybody's cup of tea. Everybody was not getting newspaper in the local language. English was a dream. Today the things have changed. But again the things are revived, again the days of radio is coming when our Honorable Prime Minister talked about Mon Ki Baat. He's using the uh, radio to communicate his uh, mind, what he thinks about the different issues of the country. And why he is using radio, that is what also we should ask ourselves. Why he is using radio? Why he is not using television? Why he is not using other media of communication? Because till today, radio is there in the villages. Radio is still one of the popular mode of getting communication, receiving communication from different parts of the world. Of course, a very difficult situation today, if I say this August gathering that Indira Gandhi National Open University has decided to close down all the radio centers which they had to install it, they have spent crores, and to close down it, they are spending crores. And this activity of Indira Gandhi National Open University is now to be taken over by NCRT. 
you know, uh, this discussion I was also participating in that discussion. Why NCRT is taking over this uh, radio stations? Because they know that the intensity of communicating any message, the possibility of using radio, radio the intensity of communicating any message through radio is more powerful than any other media of communicating it to the common people, common masses of the country. We say many things, many things are existing, many things are not existing. Because for example, we are a open university, we are catering the needs of people who cannot afford to have higher education in their life. Even if we think of increasing the, raising the fee structure of 50 rupees, even I have to think 100 times, should we do it or should we not? Some days back there was proposal that if any college is not having teachers, counselors in a particular program, should we allow those study centers to st have new programs. Then I talked to the people in our IT department and I was discussing that how we have to look after the requirement of those people. Because everywhere we do not have adequate number of counselors. That does not mean the people of that place should be deprived. So what we decided that we have to take the help of online counseling and to provide the facility to those people through online, online counseling and we are evolving mechanism in that regard. I was talking to Sangeeta ji that uh, can we use this one radio uh, to promote our online program, our counseling program. Because if you uh, look at the present facility which exists, it is the radius is only 30 kilometer. Then, day before yesterday or yesterday I was asking, can we use it for throughout the country? She was talking about internet, using internet radio. Now, if, now I think we have to think seriously about it through internet radio, if we can spread the message, if we can provide counseling to our learners in the village areas. Because, you know, uh, we are talking about uh, internet, the counseling, online counseling. Online counseling requires certain facilities which a common man may not have, a common family may not have, a common learner may not have. But there is a possibility, even the mobile which a common learner has, even if it is not an Android mobile, but there is radio facility in that mobile. If we make a proper publicity of our objective that we are going to provide online counseling through Gyanbani, through internet, radio, then perhaps some of the problems which are existing to the people who are on truly unreached living in different part of the country or different part of the state, they can be benefited. So I hope that in this direction we should have some intensive discussion that how we have to reach those unreached through this uh, Gyanbani program across the state, particularly through internet radio facilities. We have to think about this. If it is possible, then we have to develop some policy in this regard so that we will be able to achieve our objective. No doubt it is a fact that, you know, young present generation people cannot understand the significance of radio, whether it is a Ganbani or radio program. But it is, I still believe that there are many opportunities, many, many things which we can uh, communicate through radio radio programs, because already I, I was uh, uh, going through the activities which we have done through this uh, radio programs, Gyanbani programs. Uh, I could see that, you know, 
we are involving everybody people who are knowledgeable on different issues which common people should know our learners should know for example we talk about gyana parampara gyan parampara issue is a very burning issue today in the national education policy there can be discussion debate in the radio in our time we used to listen radio uh, to know about different discussions or discussion even political discussion does not mean in rather in the television we see the fighting among the uh, so called leaders about issues which are closer to them not to the nation but now if we can uh, discuss with uh, these political issues or any social issues or uh, health issues any issue through this ganbani channel i think people at large in the state especially our learners will be largely benefited so in this regard we have to think seriously about it after a serious debate involving learned people like vinod ji i think we can evolve some mechanism so that the ganbani channel which we have uh, gan the tarang papcha prota pa channel which we have with us that can be strengthened that can be useful to our learners and the people of the state in general the, the, i am really happy that this program has been organized inviting so eminent people in the field and i am confident that debate which we have today that is going to strengthen this area of our activity further and can be useful for our learners and for the people of the state thank you very much um, thank you sir for your valuable insights uh, before we conclude we would like to offer a moment to each to invite its speaker and our chief guest as a token of appreciation from our end and for this purpose i'd like to request our vice chancellor sir to kindly do the honors and dr juri hazarika to assist our vice chancellor sir in this regard Thank you, sir. Now I'd like to request the Registrar of the University, Dr. Ulvudi Choudhury, who is also the chairperson for today's program, to offer the formal vote of thanks. Honorable Vice Chancellor, Chief Guest of today's program, Sri Jod P J Borwa, Professor Pavrala from Hyderabad University. who spoke as the key speaker dr songita the deputy director in empc esteemed members of the organizing committee and the guest presence in fact we are very thankful to professor pavrala and shri jut p j borwa for formulating the philosophy and the dynamics of the community radio before us at the same time we are also thankful to professor pavrala for highlighting the role played by the community media particularly during the covid times it's a happy moment for us that we have completed 12 years of our existence and this year celebration along with the invitation to professor pavrala from the hyderabad university has only become possible because of the support provided by our honorable vice chancellor coming to a personal note 
regarding community radio although theoretically speaking it is equally important both in democratic and authoritarian systems i do believe from my experiences that in authoritarian systems there is a possibility of using the community radio by the regime to manufacture verdict in its favor but such a threat from the regime is generally not available in democracy although sometimes the regime tries to do it but democracy provides a kind of inbuilt resistance to the people and that could be reflected through the community media that is why community media is all important for us so with this i thank once again all those who have made this program successful thank you once again thank you very much